Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Brie and today's video is going to be a reading vlog where I'm catching up on some series. So I have been reading in the middle of 29 series and I've been making some slow progress through them and so I'm ready to start a lot of new series so I want to prioritize getting through some other series. So the main book I'm going to be trying to read is European Travel for the Monstrous Gentlewoman by Theodore Goss. I am currently 100 pages in and loving it. This one is the second in the Athena Club series, the first one being The Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter, which I read and absolutely loved. And so far in the 100 pages, I am just loving it already. I'm laughing with the characters. I'm having just such a good time. So this can be the number one priority for this reading vlog. And then after that, I will only have one book in the series left to read, which is sad, but also I want to be getting through series and not leaving them, especially when I love them so much. Because the other book I am reading to and from work is the second in the Lady Sherlock series. It's called A Conspiracy in Belgravia by Sherry Thomas. I read the um, A Study in Scarlet Women. I read that probably two to three years ago by now and I've had the rest of the series and I have not I think it's maybe only been two years but I haven't even picked up the second book in that time and that is just way too long for me to start a series especially one that I really enjoyed and so I am now about halfway through I'm on page 180 of this and I've been just listening to it on audiobook as I go to work and come back and that has been really nice so I'm trying to make some progress in the series and this is what kind of prompted me to do this reading vlog. So there's those two. And then if I can get to them, I really want to read the next two in the Rexford and Sloan because this comes out on the 27th. And I just absolutely love this series. So I want to be reading it and let you know my thoughts before or as it's coming out. So I just have the Murder at the Royal Botanic Gardens to read before I can read Murder at Serpentine Bridge. But I tend to fly through these because I just love them so much. These are the fifth and sixth of the Rexford and Sloan series. I've read previously one through four and love them all. I think I haven't given anything lower than a four star. So I am just having a grand old time with these books. I will be picking up those two if I can get to it. And then I wanted to make some progress on just a smaller, really quick series, which is Garlic and the Witch came out. So the first one was Garlic and the Vampire. And I went and got my hands on Garlic and the Witch which this is one of my favorite books this year. It's just so sweet, so wholesome and cute. So I'm definitely gonna be reading this for this reading vlog. And this is just about garlic and she's gonna have to help her witch friend, I believe, Agnes. Um, I don't know too much about it. I just wanna go in and have a great time, but uh, this makes me so, my like heart so happy to be having this in my hands. So I will be reading this very, very soon. So these are the books I have for this reading vlog. Realistically, I'll probably finish these three and then at least maybe one of these, but I would love to get to both of them because I really am excited for it. So let's hope that I'm just in the reading mood. <laughs> okay, so let me talk about the first book that I am reading, which is A Conspiracy in Belgravia. I'm about halfway through and I'm really enjoying this. It's hard for me to remember how I felt about the first one because it has been like two years, but I just remember really enjoying it. And I am enjoying this one as well. I feel like there's just a couple things that I have noticed in the second one, like Charlotte Holmes, who is really Sherlock Holmes. She disguises herself as a man so that she can investigate. And there's like this fixation on her and eating and her body, but it I cannot tell what the author's meaning, if it's meaning it in a negative way. I don't know. I'm having a hard time, like, grasping what is actually being meant by this. And so it's just kind of throwing me off because I don't feel like, I don't know how to feel about it at this time because I just, I'm unsure what the intention is, basically. So that's been one thing. But I have enjoyed the mystery. It's been hard for me to follow the mystery because I've been listening to it in the car. And so I do zone out sometimes and have to, like, try to go back and so I feel like there's just gaps in what I am grasping of the mystery but overall I'm having a good time. I feel like it's nice to be back in this world and I really like how Sherry Thomas takes characters from the original books and kind of reimagines them. So like Mycroft is very much still like Mycroft of the stories but he is actually brothers with Lord Ingram who is like her childhood friend instead of being her brother because Mycroft is Sherlock Holmes's brother. 
he's actually a like family friend kind of a thing. And I like that difference. And then she has her own sisters and her own sister, um, Olivia. So she has two of them or three of them, but Olivia is the most prominent and she has just her own like personality and is, I'm not sure if she's tied to some other characters, but yeah, it's just really interesting. And then Moriarty was brought up in here and it's the first mention of Moriarty and how that is going to like be a little different from the original stories. So I like the liberty she's taking with this. So I, right now I think it's about a four star read for me. It depends on how the last bit goes, but I will update you later in the week when I have finished this. So you won't know this because it is no time for you, but for me, it has been like a whole week. I think I recorded my intro on Monday and it is now Saturday. I've just had just a week which means I didn't get any filming done because I just could not get out of bed, really. That means that I did get a lot of reading done, but also I just stopped with Noah at a garage sale. We were just gonna go to the farmer's market, but it was a little too busy for me and I just was overwhelmed. So we were driving home and we saw this and I got a bunch of stuff for $14, $14. So I wanted to show you to break up, you know, a little bit of the book stuff. So I think I'm going to start with that and then we'll talk about the books I read. Let's start. They were selling their frames for a dollar and I'm always looking for like old looking frames. And so I found this one and I'm going to take out the painting and I just really like the edges of it. I always like stuff like this. So that was the first one I found. And then because they saw me looking at that, they like ended up having a lot more that I think they just thought no one would like those. So then they brought me this one, which is a wooden one, and I really like it. Um, and I can take out this insert, and I don't know what I'm going to put in it, but I just really like the wood details. And I have a lot of, like, goldish frames, so I wanted to incorporate some wooden ones, too, to give some variety. And then they brought me this one, which is very similar to the other wood one, but it's a lot longer, and I can take that out, and I can have it multiple ways, because I don't have a lot of, like, different size frames. <laughs> He's smelling all the things because it smells like them. So I got those for a total of $3, which was like really good. And I can never find them at like Goodwill or any of those. So then I found this for $3 and I can't decide if he's a little scary or cute, but I thought if I really don't like it facing forward, facing back is really cute. And I just really like this. And I haven't, I don't have a lot of fall like decor. It's all been hand-me-downs and I haven't really collected like my own stuff. So I'm trying to figure out like just slowly collect some stuff that I like. And I just really liked the pattern. I thought it's very like classic. And so I picked it up and we will probably be decorating for fall today or tomorrow. So that'll be in this vlog as well. Noah thinks he's cute. I can't decide if I think he's creepy or not. <laughs> I don't know. I'm leaning in the cute direction, I think. Then perhaps my favorites finds we're getting down to is I found two of these and they're really heavy. They're like, no one thinks they're stone, but they're like bookends. And uh, ever since I went to Charleston and learned that these are supposed to be uh, pineapple, I always thought they were like acorns, but I guess what I've been told is that this is what people thought pineapple looked like based on people traveling and coming back and explaining pineapple. And it does not look like a pineapple at all, but I find that really funny. So I got two of them and they were $2 each, but they're like really nice quality. And I was just at Goodwill the other day and I found some and they were like, just, <laughs> they were just um, like hollow and they were really cheapy. And I was like, decided to wait it out. And I'm so glad I did because I love these so much. And then the last two. <laughs> Pepe, I know it smells so good, huh? I know. Ugh. So the uh, last two, I've been trying to find some decorations that are like antique, but still a little colorful. And I think that I really like this um, patterning. So this was $2 and it's a little jar that just opens and has like a little thing. And oops. And I just really like the pattern on it. I just think it's very delicate. And I like the blue, like having the color. And I just like 
one thing I love is just little jars. I don't really put a lot in them, but I just love little jars everywhere. <laughs> it's my thing, I guess. And then this was also $2, and this one's by far my favorite. And it just can keep something in there. And I just think that's so precious. So yeah, so I got all of that for $14. And I don't I don't feel guilty at all. <laughs> I in fact feel very is is eh, that's the word hard word. Ecstatic. Ecstatic. Oh why word why are words hard? Oh god. So I'm gonna find a place for these. I keep I told Noah that every time I buy something. <laughs> I'm always like, oh, for my bookshelves. And I was like, I really need to like decorate the rest of the house and not just <laughs> put things on my bookshelves. So I'm going to strive to not put these on my bookshelf. So let's talk about the first book I finished, which was A Conspiracy in Belgravia by Sherry Thomas. This is the second in the Lady Sherlock series. I listened to this on audio and then I finished the last like 20 pages reading along and listening. Actually, did I listen? I just read along because I just wanted to finish it and I had gotten home from my commute and I was just really wanting to know what happened. And I'm going to give this four stars. I feel like it carried over some things I liked from the first one. I really like how Sherry Thomas kind of takes the classic characters and reinvents them where they still feel like nods to the classic characters. And you don't, I don't feel like for me, I feel this is totally unlike Sherlock, but if you're like a mega fan, I don't know how it would compare necessarily because I'm not I've read a couple Sherlock Holmes, but I haven't really deep dived into it. But I just like how the characters feel like nods for that, but then very much their own. And she's taken and kind of moved characters' relationships around to make Charlotte Holmes be a woman Sherlock. I enjoy, like, just the family dynamics that they bring into this and also the love interest of Lord Bancroft. I say kind of because they're not, it's not like a real romance at this point point at least. And so I really like that and I really like how like Miss Watson feels like similar to Watson in the Sherlock Holmes but then she's not a doctor. Her daughter is a doctor and so they bring her daughter into it as well. And I just I'm having a good time with the series. I think it was well paced for a mystery and I think that the reason it's not a five for me is just that I didn't I didn't like fall in love with the story like I did with something like like the Rexford and Sloan series the characters just aren't as endearing to me as in some of those other books so I think that's why I'm going to give it a four star but if you're looking for a series that if you love Sherlock Holmes and you're looking for a series that's kind of like a spin-off of it I think that you could like this series or if you just are looking for like an intro to historical mysteries I feel like this could be a good one to start with because most people know Sherlock Holmes so you kind of know what you're getting into and I think it does things that a lot of historical mysteries give you and this I tend to like a little bit more than some others because it is a little more mystery based than like social interaction based if that makes sense social gathering based so I would recommend it if you're looking for a place to start and then the 100 pages I've read of European Travel for the Monstrous Gentlewoman by Theodore Goss honestly no bad things to say I am just loving being back in the world I've already laughed out loud two things being like said the interjections I've read interjections to Noah because these are too cute and funny and I'm having a grand old time it's basically leaving off the last book kind of leaves off on a cliffhanger and this one's just starting diving right into the action they're traveling this time to different countries and so I've been enjoying that 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 has just started yeah I'm having a good time I feel like Theodore Gus really does a great job for me to like connect with the characters I just feel like each one feels so unique and they just feel like a little sisterhood that I'm just really here for. I will let you know more thoughts when I have gotten more into it because 100 pages seems like a lot but in this <laughs> it is not very far. Yes I am reading the library co copy because I don't want to ruin my paperback don't judge me. Um, I did get halfway so I'm on page 369 so I'm just over halfway point and loving it. Already five out of five stars. Hopefully it stays that way, but I'm just really loving being back in the world. The banter, I know for some it's just not as enjoyable of like the little interjections, but I'm here for it. They have, in this one, they're traveling. Part of the story, a group of them are traveling and then part of them are at home and then stuff happens. So then that group is traveling as well. So there's a lot of different moving parts in this one, which I really like because 
I think if you maybe found the first one boring, this one could be a little more adventurous for you because they are like out of their element and there's a lot more going on and it feels faster paced because there's a lot of movement because of the travel, but also you're just like thrown right into the mystery of this one. It's like really like the last one stops and this one just dives right in. It's more action packed than the first one. And I think I'm enjoying it more than the first one, but I still really love the first one because you get to know the characters and this one's just like giving you more insight into each character as well. Like I feel like we're unpacking a little bit more of each person's personality. There's a character in two characters in here that are brought in that are nods to Sherlock Holmes, but then also another, just like a scientist from back in the day. And I just, I find that really fun. Yeah, I just feel like the adventure in here is just really well done and fun. And it has like this really good dynamic of it's serious because they're dealing with hard things, but not overly serious because there's just so much humor and banter back and forth. I think it's just a fun series for me. Like I come in reading these and I just have a good cozy time. And I think it's perfect for this time of year for some reason. The travel makes me feel like perfect for fall. So I am going to be reading this for the rest of the day. I have, it's 706 pages. So I have 337 pages left. So I think I'm going to just decorate and get cozy because it is in the 50s or 60s out right now. And I am absolutely freezing. So I want to decorate. I want to get some candles on and just curl up and finish this book because I'm just really, really loving it. And all I want to be doing is reading this world. I feel like every time I pick up the book and I think I'm just going to read a little bit, I like can't stop because I love it so much. So those are my thoughts on this one and I will wrap them up in a little bit. So this is my box of fall stuff. And then I have this little basket that has a few things in it that just says farm fresh pumpkins. So what I'm working with. So one thing I like to do is I just like to take everything out and put it on the table so I can see what I'm working with. So I think that I'm going to do that now and then just see because I don't always remember what I have. Weather 
Well, it is now Sunday and Noah is at his friend's house and so I am gonna be reading more. I have about 150-ish pages left. Loving it still. I don't have any thoughts that I think will be like intriguing right now. I want to get to the end before I give like final thoughts. Just know I'm gonna finish this this afternoon but I wanted to show you because um, my mother-in-law got me a gift card for my birthday which was really sweet of her to half price books and so today this morning I went crazy <laughs> and I got it was like sometimes I go to half price books and I don't really find anything I'm looking for but today was the opposite I found like so many good books so I just like hit the jackpot and I'm really glad I had that gift card because I couldn't put anything down and I told Noah these are all books that were on my TBR already so like that usually doesn't happen so that's great so the first book I got was when no one is watching by Alyssa Cole and this is like a psychological thriller and I believe it has to do with like gentrification and this woman notices her neighbors are going missing but then people keep having like excuses for them and there's like a new white management company that came in and she believed something fishy is going on with them and so I think those things are going to be tied together and I've just heard like really good reviews on this so I can't wait to get to it and I'm really happy I found this there and then I got Silence for the Dead by Simone G. James. I don't know anything about this except for I know that Simone St. James always does like paranormal mysteries and so I'm excited to get to this. I recently read her backlist Haunting of Maddie Claire and I gave it four stars but her newer stuff I've given the Sundown Motel five stars and the Book of Cold Cases five stars so I just want to read all her backlist even if they're not five stars. I just really like her writing and then I found Gallant, Gallant by B.E. Schwab there. Before this came out, I really wanted to read it, but then I've been seeing kind of mixed reviews, so I held off for a while, but then I saw it there for a really good price, and I'm really intrigued. It sounds like something I'm gonna really like, so I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna give it a shot. This is also one that's hit or miss, but I feel like people who have similar reading tastes to me have kind of enjoyed this one, so, and it was on really good sale because it had been sitting there for a while, so I decided to get The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce, and this is about like a woman and I think she goes into a sanatorium. There's a mystery there. I don't really know much more about that, but it was one that when it was coming out, I thought it sounded really cool and creepy and perfect for like the fall time. But then I heard kind of mixed reviews again on it. And so I've been waiting and when it finally went down in price, I was like, all right, I'll get it for this price. So now I have it and I think I want to try to get to it soon because I think it would be a really good wintery one based on the fact that it's I know I said fall a second ago, but based on this now, I'm like, maybe I'll save it for like December time because it looks very wintry to me. Then this one is one like, I'm not really sure how I'm gonna like it, but the synopsis has just been intriguing me. And I've had it on my TBR for a while, but when it says a, rom a love story, that's what kind of throws me, but I've heard just really good things. And it's Anatomy by Diana Schwartz. And it's about a woman who wants to study medicine, but it's, what's the year? It doesn't really say but it's in Edinburgh and I believe it's supposed to be like the 1800s or maybe it's not like a specific time but it's kind of reminiscent of that and women aren't allowed to study medicine so she makes a deal with her professor that if she can ace all of his exams without like being allowed in the classroom then she gets to be his apprentice and so she ends up like meeting up with a grave robber and he is helping her to like examine bodies and things um, but then other grave robbers start going missing and so I think they both have to solve this mystery and I think that that's where the romance will be will be between the two of them and I just like the overall plot of it so I am excited to get to it and plus this cover is just stunning and then this was a book that I had on my 22 books for 2022 and I just haven't got to it I don't really know why but I'm still super excited for it so when I saw it there they had a paperback that was more and then I found this hardback and it was less than the paperback so I was like um yeah sign me up so that's Legendborn by Tracy Dion and this is like an Arthur retelling and that's really all I know about it but I think it sounds really good I've heard such great reviews on this series and I know that there's at least one or maybe two more out in the series and so I do want to really get to this soon and I just love anything Arthurian retelling and I think that this one is going to be really good then I've got they Never Learn by Lane Fargo, which is like a female serial killer who is like, I think, killing men who do bad things to women. And I'm a little worried about the content of it, but I've heard just only really good reviews for this. Either it's like, usually I hear like a four or five star for this. So 
I just like feel like I need to find out for myself because it does sound like something I could like and it sounds fast paced and like twisty but I just kind of worry about like the content of it but we'll see and just because I know that going in that might help me a little bit so I did pick this up because I have heard this recommended over and over again so yeah those are all the books really happy I went book shopping I meant to take you with me but then I just got two in the zone with finding my books so I did not but I usually do not do that good at the bookstore, but I did this time. All right, I finished. And uh, yeah, five out of five stars. I honestly have no complaints about this book. I feel like a lot of times second books can have like second book syndrome and just not have a lot of adventure or anything like that. But I really feel like this book did just such a good job of having action. Like it was more action-packed I think than the first one and there's just so much that goes on in here that really expands the story and I just can't wait to see what the third one goes because it left off on a cliffhanger and yeah I'm just I'm completely in love with this series I just feel like it's one of those series that is just exactly what I look for in a book it feels so cozy it feels like found family is an element in here so I love that and it's just about women and science and just like taking back your own power and coming together. I don't know. I just, I love it so much. <laughs> I really think I like this one even more than the first one, though like I really can't compare too much. Like I love them both, but I just feel like you get to know the characters a lot more in this one. The mystery just expands so much in here and I love all the kinds of historical fantastical people that are brought into this because there's a lot more that are brought into here. I had such a good time and I really just want to dive into the next one but I will restrain myself. <laughs> so my plan is to read Garlic and the Witch here tonight and I, it should only take me like maybe an hour and I just can't wait to get to this. It looks so cute and I just know it's gonna make me so happy. <laughs> I'm so excited. This is just so cute. If you haven't picked up Garlic and the Vampire, I'd highly recommend it. It's just a sweet story about vegetables and kind of like believing in yourself and things and garlic is just like a very anxious little garlic and it's just about like believing in herself and I love her friendship with Carrot. It's just so wholesome. So yeah, can't wait to pick this up right now. So it's been a couple of days. I have been pretty sick but I made some progress on books. So first of all, on Sunday, I finished Garlic and the Witch by Brie Paulson and I just needed this. It made my heart so happy. It's so cute. I don't know if there's going to be more. I really hope there will be more. But the way it ended, I'm like, it could just end here. I just had so much fun. It's just a beautiful art style and just so, so sweet. Garlic is just the sweetest. And I just like the little adventures. They're very quick reads and I think if you like or looking for just a happy read. If you have maybe like a kid that you want to like read a graphic novel with, I think this could be a good option. I just think it's so cute and wholesome and it just makes my heart happy. <laughs> and I'm happy to have it on my shelves. So five stars for me. No complaints there. And then I've made it to, let's see, 115 pages in Murder at the Royal Botanic Gardens. This is the fifth in the Rexford and Sloan series. And I'm really enjoying it. Having a great time. I did try the audiobook for the first time. I didn't start with the audiobook in the first few books. And I'm really glad I didn't because I really don't like the audiobook. I feel like the narrator he made Charlotte seem like whiny to me, which is never what how I read her in the books. So I don't know. I just, I didn't love it. And I think if I had maybe started with that, I don't know if the series would be as endearing as it is to me. This mystery is following like botany which one of the kids that Charlotte like watches, Hawk, he is like really into botany. So I think he'll get more, maybe more of this mystery he'll be involved because he's involved in everyone. But Raven, his older brother, is like more involved because he's older. And so now that like Hawk's growing up throughout these books, I'm hoping we get a little more insight into him, which is would be cute and just get more of his like personality in it and his involvement in the mystery but I'm just I'm having a great time love being back there's exciting things happening in their personal lives that I don't want to get away give away but and also there is a 
person that was in a previous mystery who has come back and so we've got some tension. So I'm just living for it. I'm flying through. I literally read this yesterday. I read 115 pages. Like I didn't want to put it down and I've been editing a video and just wanting to get back to this. I just keep thinking about reading it and I was really sad that I couldn't listen to the audiobook on the way to work because I really wanted to but I was like I feel like it brings my enjoyment down of the book and I don't want that because it's not the book's fault. I am gonna just get in bed and just just read and then see how far I can get. I'll probably read another 100 pages and then just have 100 pages tomorrow. We'll see. Hello. I wanted to update you because I finished Murder at the Royal Botanic Gardens and I think I'm going to give this probably four and a half stars. I really enjoyed the mystery. I just was sucked in throughout the whole thing and I just felt like this one was a little more, there was more going on in their personal life in the way the second book or the, in the way the fourth book book ended. This one just had more excitement to it, I think. But I don't want to give it full five stars because part of the reveal of the mystery, I don't want to give it away, but it involves the U.S. and England. And this is known, like, throughout the whole mystery, you kind of know that the, the person killed is from the United States. But I just feel like the reveal that revealed between the U.S. and England, it just kind of made the it come out like the governments were the good guys in this scenario and not really realistic to the time. I don't I don't know. Well, I don't think it did it completely horribly. I just feel like I didn't like the twist and how it was handled as much. Um, and so I was a little disappointed in that. But overall, the rest of the book I enjoyed. I enjoyed the mystery and it was twisty turny and I just kind of didn't really see a lot of things coming and was just long for the ride. So I had a great time and I think the way the found family is being played out. I'm a huge fan. So I finished that and I'm going to give it four and a half stars. And so I'm now on Murder at the Serpentine Bridge, which is the sixth book, and it came out on the 27th. So it is out now when you're seeing this video. Uh, what page am I on? I'm on page seven. So I'm barely even started this. I started and then I remembered I hadn't filmed a clip for the ending of the other one. So my goal today and tomorrow is to finish this so I can wrap this vlog up. And I think I can do that because I don't have very many plans today. Noah and I are going to go to some garage sales um, because there's a few in the area. And I think that that's pretty much it. I'm going to come back and read since it was my birthday on Thursday. And we've been kind of celebrating this morning with my family and everything. And so this is going to be our day to just kind of do whatever we want. So I think that's the plan. So I'll check back in later when I have read a significant amount. I'm hoping to get through halfway today. And then I will let you know uh, my thoughts then. Leaving all my worries, I prepare for something new Whatever it was that held me back, I'm sure it wasn't true So, it's now Sunday and I am at page 200, so I've made it over halfway through this and I'm really enjoying it. I feel like I'm liking this one better than the last one. It's got more high I guess it's got higher stakes in this one than the other ones previous because this one is dealing with the government and basically there's something that's been stolen and it's going to be auctioned off to different countries and so there's like a higher risk because it's involving like a lot of countries and potential war and stuff and this is taking place like right after Napoleon's been sent to the island off of the coast of France so it's like high tension in this time and there's a new character that has been brought in that is friends with now the boys, Raven and Hawk, and I really enjoy him. His name's Peregrine, but they call him Falcon, and I really enjoy his character and how he relates to the overall mystery, but also just, like, a new friendship for the boys. And, yeah, I'm, like, flying through it. I feel like it reads really easily. It reads, like, the other ones, the Family dynamics are always good in here. It gives me all the warm feelings for the family vibe. So I'm just having a great time. I, say, I think it's at least a four and a half star right now. 
and depending on the ending could be a five star. I'm really, really happy to be caught up with this and just this one is like a great last one to be reading until like another one in the series would come out. I'm gonna edit a video that you'll see before this one and then we start editing this one and then I'm gonna get back to reading and finish this tonight so that I can go into the week with new reading vlog and have things like kind of caught up so that I can be prepared for the week. So those are my goals. We'll see what happens. But I did want to show you because I saw some, I showed you some clips from going garage sailing, but then there wasn't a lot at the garage sale. So we went to the thrift store and we found this. So we got this dresser and it's got like a little hat box in it and everything. So we found it and I've been looking for a dresser for like three years now because we kind of run out of closet space. We, I was keeping like our clothes in baskets on the ground and it worked, but I was always keeping my eye out for a dresser and we found this and the price was so good. For one, being in an antique store, it was like very close to what you'd find on like Facebook Marketplace and it's in amazing condition. It's like the perfect style that I like. It's like antique without being too ornate or anything. So if my style changes, like it would fit with a lot of things and it fits perfectly in this corner. We've already filled it up and I'm just so happy to find it. It was perfect and I've always wanted a little like hat box. So we've got Noah's sweaters in there, but yeah, I just, I'm loving it so much. I'm so happy we found it. I was not expecting to find that, but it was one of those things where I just couldn't walk away from it. <laughs> so we ended up getting it and I'm really happy. So yeah, I just want to show you that. But now I will see you again when I have finished the Murder at the Serpentine Bridge. So I finished the Murder at the Serpentine Bridge. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and give this four and a half stars. I really enjoyed it. I think that the one before this, I actually am gonna give four stars in this one, four and a half, because I just really liked how this one was laid out. It was definitely more intriguing. There was a bit more tension because it has to do with multiple different countries and like all vying for this thing that's been stolen. And I just, I enjoyed that. I feel like it made the tensions a lot higher. And I really enjoyed the new boy, Peregrine, also known as Falcon, that they introduced. I think he is really sweet and I do enjoy his, like, storyline. So I can't wait to get, hopefully, more of him in books to come. There was a lot to do with, like, sailing and stuff, which I tend to like ship-based things. So I thought that was really good. Like, I'm happy to get a little bit of a break before the next book because I've been reading them kind of back to back. And I feel like when the next book comes out, I'm really gonna, like really love it because I'm going to have been waiting for it. I am loving this series. So glad I'm caught up and I'll be definitely looking for more series like this. So this is out now. It's It was out on uh, September 27th. So it is now available. So yeah, thank you to Kensington for sending me this arc. I really enjoyed it and I'm so happy to be caught up. So here are all the historical mysteries. They tended to be all historical except for Garlic and the Witch. I didn't really mean to do that, but I caught, caught up on a lot of series, which was great. I'm happy to have made progress. So now I'm caught up on the Rex Bridge and Sloan series. I'm caught up on the Garlic and the Vampire series. And then I have only one more to go in the Theodore Goss, the um, Extraordinary Gentlewoman, I believe. Um, I can never remember the series name, but I love this series. So I only have one more to go in that, and then I have a lot more to go in this, but I finally made progress after a two-year hiatus. So had a great time. I hope you enjoyed, and if you let me know what series you're in the middle of, and maybe if you made it this far. I've never tried this, but if you made it to the end of the video, maybe give a... Hmm. Oh, put a garlic emoji for, for garlic. So thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.